Now, this is the last unit for this class, is optimization. So optimization is one of the most popular topic in machine learning before deep learning. So at least for, for me, I submit NIPS three times, only the optimization paper get accepted. Okay. I tried several other ideas. So, but in the deep learning world, this optimization is not so popular because uh, we will show later because we do not complex optimizations. So all the theory cannot apply nicely here, so the research is still like a long time to go to understand how the optimization method how it works on deep learning workload. But now we talk about fundamental things, the basic stuff about the optimizations, so that like you can catch, catch up all the theoretical things. Also, we give you more insight why, how gradient descent works, how stochastic gradient descent works, and how we, most importantly, we will cover what is Adam. We use Adam a lot, but we never talk about what is Adam. Okay? So this, in general, optimization is like we trying to minimize fx. So subject to x is in uh, set C. The f is called cost function. So we call it x. Uh, for in deep learning, x is, x is not input. It's just the learnable parameters. But in, by optimization theory, because we don't have, we just have x. We don't care about the input. We just, the input is just the merged into the cost function we have. So f is function from um, like the undimensional real space into a single um, space, a single vector, a single scalar. The constraint set, where we have multiple choice of a constraint set, uh, set. For example, we can pick a bunch of fi such that um, we only want to have x fi equal to zeros. Also, we can pick up a bunch of gi such that we only want the, all, all this x gi less than equal to, less equal to than zero. We call it unconstrained if we see just the, the whole space. So for deep learning, we talk about a lot of unstrained problem. But like um, unstrained problem, adding a regularization, we just can turn into a constrained problem. But now we most likely talk about unstrained. But in the theory part, we don't, doesn't matter. Okay, so then the, the optimization problem we are interested in doesn't have any closed form solution. If you have, it's a simple problem. You don't need machine learning. You can solve it exactly. So most of we have is no closed form solution. And the most of the problem we talk about actually is NP complete. Like if, if it's easy to solve, it's, it's a computer science problem. It's an algorithm problem. If it's NP complete, we're trying to learn approximate the uh, solution. So which, may, which makes the most optimization methods a problem we have no closed form solution. We are using like iter iterative methods so trying to find a local minima, a local solution. So we call it the minima. So there's two kinds of minima here. One's called the global minima. It's easy to understand that for global minima x star, any values x in the C should be greater than, like greater or equal than f x star. It's global. It's a local minima. The, the key concept here is the local minima that the x, there exists a uh, y epsilon for any x in C, and the distance between x to x star is less than y epsilon. And for such x, we all, we all have f x star should be less equal than fx. So, so here is a fig shows that uh, we have a global minimal that the C here is minus one to uh, two. So this is a C, we only pick up a segment. The local minima here is only a minima for the y epsilon not cancel off around 0 0.8. If you increase the y epsilon to one, then there's a global minima which is less, uh, less than you. So it's only valid for a given condition y epsilon. Okay. In most cases, we can only guarantee that the inter, inter, uh, iterative app methods only find the local minima because you have no global picture of what the loss function you have. Okay, so, but we can, if we want to get some theoretical understanding, we can make the problem simple. So the typical way to make the problem simple is make it a convex. In convex, so subset C is a convex. If we can pick up any X and a Y and I draw a line between X and a Y, 
then this line should be within this set. Look here, uh, in mass, we pick up x and y, pick up alpha. Alpha is between zero and one. Alpha x plus one minus alpha y, which is um, a line in the x and the y, and the offset is alpha. Then it should be on in C as well. So here, example here, the left two is convex, the right two is not because the segment we can choose two, uh, we can choose x and y. The segment of the line is not in in C. Okay. Similarly, we call it we are convex function. So f from C to R is convex if like a little bit complex, I think, but it's easy to understand. Like, uh, and let me draw something. So, for example, this is f. We can pick up any x and the y, x, y. We can draw a line. Intuitively, if it's convex, if all the areas is below this line. You can draw any line, pick up any x and the y, and draw a line, any, any uh, segment of the function should be below it, below it. So in mass, we can pick up alpha. We first pick up alpha in the line, and also pick up alpha in the, is in the function space, this is f space. And the input space also is x and the y, we pick up the coding ones. So find the coding f, it's a z, and this is um, the coding point this value should be less than equal to, to than this value. Okay, so this is math. And if this e equality is streak, which means um, it's strictly below this one, you have, you don't have, you don't match any. So, so this is kind of like uh, not str strictly convex because, um, because this, this one is identical to this line, but if it's strictly below, then it's strictly convex. So for convex, we have several things to understand that. Firstly, we can look into the first order condition. So uh, here, f is convex if and only if. Um, uh, let's explain that. The, on the right hand is given y. The right hand is actually the first order approximation of this function. So this is called the first order approximation, which means we pick up x and approximate the function by the, by a line, this is a line here. The line scope slope is the gradient we have. So, uh, because we need this concept, we want to explain it a bit better. For any point, we can approximate this function by a first order thing. The first order is like, the offset here is fx, and then with the line here, the line slope will be equal to the gradients of this, at, at this point. So this is kind of, um, locally should be a very good approximation of the area. And by this convex means that any value will be below this line. So we can draw a lot of, lot of line here. It's convex if we can all the functions above this line. Okay, so this is the basic idea. So the first order condition Second order condition means that we mentioned that we can compute the second order one. Um, it's f is from n to n space to single one. So the gradient will be n-dimensional vector. The second order will be n by n-dimensional vector. It's uh, symmetric. And if it's convex, if and, if and only if the hazy matrix, which is second order of matrix, it's uh, semi-positive definite, which means it's symmetric. Uh, which means the least eigenvalue should be uh, greater or equal to than zero. If it's strict convex, if, well, this hazy is um, positive or definite, which means all these eigen eigenvalues will be greater than zero. Okay, so we have three ways to, to judge if a function is convex or not. So second order, first order, uh, that is actually in the zero order, okay? So because we need to use these properties in the proof we have in the future. Now, how about convex and non-convex? And to examine all, all these models we have, 
Like we talked about maybe 20 different models. Unfortunately, only two are convex. The first one is the linear regression. Now given x, x again, this is the input, learnable is w and b, the weight and the bias. We w times x minus the bias, and the, long, the loss function is L2 long. So this is convex because we can compute the first order and then compute the second order. The second order is 2 times W transpose times W. We know this is like a semi-positive definite. So then F is a convex function. And we can extend this concept to like softmax regression. It's a classification. Again, still have a linear project of X fit into uh, the soft max and the, uh, mm, the cross entropy loss. The soft max and cross entropy loss is convex. And because we do a linear, pro linear transformation of the input, it is still convex. There's only two convex functions we have. We, if, we're adding a dense, if we're adding a hidden layer with activation, we know that the activation function make is not a linear transformation again, which uh, a nonlinear transformation with softmax and the cross entropy loss lead to non convex problem. So a single hinder layer would make it a non convex. And how about convolution neural network? And the homework we show in the middle term, we show that we can rewrite the convex as like a matrix, as a matrix uh, multiplication. But you have a spatial con uh, structure here, which makes for convex la convolution layers, even a single layer. Only for given weights, kernel weights, is a convex. In general, it's not. Uh, so for all the RN stuff, like uh, attentions, because you have so many softmax and attention H there, make it non-convex. So that is why the optimization, optimization theory is not so popular in deep learning, because if you want to understand it, you need to understand non-convex optimization. That is pretty hard. So here we have a very clear understanding what's going on with all these convex problems, but not non-convex ones. Okay, so we have a lot of recent research promising resu results, uh, but we have a long way to go. Okay. But again, let's look at, let's go back to the easy ones. Like, let's look at the convex optimizations. So a big advantage of convex optimization is that, like, uh, first of all, what is a convex optimization? It's both the loss function is convex, and the constraint set, set is convex. So the, the biggest advantage of convex optimization is that given any local minima, it is a global minima. And then if it's strictly convex, so this global minima is unique. So which makes our life much easier. So what is a local minima? The local minima is that we pick up any iterative algorithms, we walk around, and suddenly we find, okay, we find a point, any point around me is greater or equal, greater equal than me, then this is a local minima. Or on the other hand, we compute the gradients. If we find a point, the gradients is zero, it's a flat, it's a, then because the convex, every point should be equal than this gradients, then we know we find the local minima. Even without knowing anything, I know, uh, yes, I find a global one, a global solution, and it's strict, strictly convex, we find the, local, the, the unique solution we have. So which makes convex optimization is much easier to train. You just train, train, train at the end, and then you get the solution, that's all. You never talk about, like, you never talk about the early stop, uh, stopping. You only have, so in convex problem, you have a static, statistic model, which is the model itself, and op optimization problem. You know that optimization problem all, always give you the final solution. So you only need to worry about the stat statistical model. But for deep learning, it's not the case. You find the local minima is like, you're not guaranteed to be the global solution. And local minima can be like, um, you have a lot of local minima. So this one is probably not a good idea. You always don't know how, what's going on there. So which means for deep learning, the two parts are take effects. The statistical model, the model itself, the data, and the training algorithm. The two different training algorithms will give you different results. So these two guys both act to each other, if affect each other. So which make our, our life much harder. 
So you, it's hard to say that model A is better than model B if you use different optimization methods. Okay, so that's, that's a complicated thing. So that's the nice thing about convex optimization. So we can, we can actually prove, if it's convex, we can prove something. We can prove any local minima should be a global minima. If it's not, we given a local minima, we have a different global minima Y. The idea here is that we just pick up Z in locally um, uh, in, the, in the distance uh, smaller than Y epsilon, and we find Z, we find Z sh should be larger than are uh, greater or equal than uh, x, but if, if not, then we have, we show it's wrong. So whether we can choose this, because we can choose alpha according to some conditions, a small enough alpha, and I choose z equal to like alpha times x plus one minus alpha times y. Then we can show that the distance between x and z equals to one minus alpha times uh, the law of x plus y because the definition of alpha is less equal, to, uh, less equal than y epsilon. So we choose z, which is in the local range of x. But because y is global minima, so fy is less, e less than fx. By the convex definition that fz should be less equal to than like the we draw a line between fx and fz should be less equal to than this value. And it actually equals because um, f of z less equal to then, um, well, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a typo here. Um, it's, f, it should, it's actually f t f x. Okay. Then it's, it's equal to f x. So that should be wrong because f t less than f x, but this in the nearby area of x. So f x is not, not local minima which means for, for any local minima, it should be a global minima. That's a simple proof. For convex problem, we can prove a lot of things. And for non-convex ones, much harder. Okay, so that's all about like uh, convex optimization.